Hey guys, Bushcraft412 here. Starting a new series on bug out bags. After I did my video a couple weeks ago on how uh, you know bugging out will get you killed, I got a pretty pretty big response on that and a lot of requests about you know kind of showing my opinion on the proper way to bug out. And this is going to be the first section on that series. And you know, guys, this is this is opinion. So take it or leave it. If if you don't agree, that's okay. You know, but I'm just putting out my opinion. On the best way to bug out and, and in the original video if you watch it just to summarize for people who haven't seen it is I kind of say that people have this uh, romantic idea that they're gonna bug out into the woods and be Jeremiah Johnson and just live forever and be fine and that's not reality and most people's bug out bags that you see on the internet are very ill-equipped to handle wilderness survival um, or even urban survival for that matter so I want to get into this, show you the right way to do it, where your priorities should be, and not just show you my bag and be like, oh, I got this flashlight, oh, I got this knife. It's not about that. It's about putting together the right components to maximize your chances of survival. And tonight's topic is shelter. Let's face it, almost every YouTube bug out bag massively lacks in this department. And I don't get it. I think it's because people just, you know, once again, that romantic fantasy of, you know, being Mel Gibson in The Road Warrior or being Jeremiah Johnson just takes over people and they stop thinking. Shelter is your number one priority in a bug out bag. <clears throat> As we know, you can go weeks without food. You can go a couple of days without water. You can die of exposure to the elements in hours. So, shelter needs to be your number one priority in your bag, and it's not. Most people, it's one of the last priorities. Whether you're bugging in, bugging out, getting home from work, disaster happens, whatever, your number one priority needs to be shelter. In a bug out situation, you're looking at a disaster, a terrorist attack, um, societal collapse, or whatever. You don't know where you're going or you know where you're going but you don't know what's going to happen you can't predict if you're going to you know say you are bugging out and you hit roadblocks or traffic and you just can't get out you need that capability to shelter someplace you know perhaps away from your car because your car may not be a safe location say you are at home trying to get or i'm sorry you're at work trying to get back home a disaster has happened you don't make it you're going to need shelter Say, you know, society does collapse. You need to get out of town and get away from people. You need to be able to go out to a wilderness location and survive. Get away from crazy people. Whatever the reason, shelter has to be a priority in your bag. Even in a, an urban survival setting, you need shelter. If you have to evacuate your home for whatever reason, and there are no shelters out there, where are you going to go? You know, if there's no emergency shelters, it's freezing rain out. You can die in an urban environment of exposure. Very simple, you need protection. And that protection should go above everything else in your bug out bag. Because like I said, you can go weeks without food, days without water, a couple of hours being wet and cold, you will get hyperthermic. And despite all our you know little romantic fantasies, we are not all experts in making fires and having a fire, and a fire may not even be possible because say you are in an area with other people, you may not want that attention drawn to yourself with a fire. So shelter, more important than anything. Now, to do this in your bug out bag and do it right, at least in my opinion, is not expensive. It's not something that can, should consume a lot of space in your pack either. You have a lot of different ways you can go about solving this problem. Number one, you can get yourself a single one-man backpacking tent. This one here is the Eureka Solitaire. It weighs about 2.2 pounds and it will fit into a normal, you know, high schooler's backpack. It is not very big at all. Packed up, it's maybe like a four or five inch diameter, you know, cylinder that's about like 15 inches long. It's very compact and two pounds, easy, easy to set up single one-man little tent. It cost me, I bought it like for probably 55 bucks, but I bought this thing probably six, seven years ago. They're probably closer to 80 now. Um, if you don't like this Eureka, I know uh, there are a couple of uh, 
single one-man tents you can get in that $30 to $50 price range. I believe that company, Wenzel, makes one. It's like a, they call it like a biker tent or something like that. It's like 30 bucks, and you can get them online. You can get them, I know they have them on Amazon. I've seen them at Gander Mountain for like 39 They're pretty cheap and easy, and, and you know, they're not the highest quality, but they work. Um, tons of other brands out there. Just Google backpacking tents, and you'll find a ton. Um, particularly, what you want to look for is something small, and compact you don't want a big full-size tent that's like bigger than your backpack you want something that will fit in your pack fit in your trunk easy to carry that you know is, is portable and backpacking tents are the way to go um, you do a little research look up like ultralight backpacking tents and uh, you can find quite a few that are in that uh, sub $100 range that will be very good and most of these tents are uh, three seasons so they're good for everything except extreme weather you know they're not going to hold up to mount everest conditions but they'll hold up to most of what the the continental united states will throw at them so in my bug out bag i'm more than likely going to pick up an additional small backpacking tent to put in there as a permanent fixture not something i'm going to bring you know i'm going to bring it out test it once or twice make sure it's good make sure it's good quality and then it's going to go into that bug out bag and it's going to stay there uh number two is a hammock um, particularly a hammock with a mosquito net. This is a uh, hammock bliss. I think they call it like a skeeter beater or something like that. Cost me around fifty dollars. I've had it for at least five or six years. I use it all the time when I'm camping. I even bring it sometimes on day hikes because it's real easy to set up. It takes about thirty seconds to set this up with a couple of carabiners, and you have something where you can sit down and get off the ground and you know relax. Um, hammock camping, once again, Google hammock camping, hammock, you know, backpacking. People have been doing this for, you know, decades. It's a great shelter. It gets you up off the ground. Um, one of the big added, added advantages of having a hammock in your bug out bag is say if you do need to get to a really obscure location, you can put that hammock between any two trees. You can put this sucker up in the middle of a swamp. You know, you find two trees, you can put that up in a swamp. No one's going to go looking for you in a swamp. You can set this up on the side of a mountain, on the side of a cliff. You can set it wherever you can find two trees far enough apart that you can, you know, basically safely get into and out of this thing. So you can find terrain that most people will not travel on to set up your camp. And uh, it's very easy, you know, for bad weather is to set up a... Uh, a tarp over it to keep out bad weather. I actually slept in this exact hammock during Hurricane Irene in the Adirondacks using this US uh, GI poncho as my my uh, my tarp and I got a little bit wet from the driving rain but not bad at all considering it was a hurricane. So great camping system and it gives you a lot of portability as to where you go. Plus if you are bugging out you know this is just a cool thing to set up and use as like a rest you know, if you need to rest, if you're carrying 60, 80 pounds of gear in the woods or in, an, you know, wherever, you can set this thing up anywhere. If you're in an urban or a suburban environment, you can go in someone's backyard and set that up. So say if you're bugging out to your cousin Jimmy's and your cousin Jimmy has 10 other people who are bugging out there and there's no beds, you can set that sucker up in his backyard and you'll be comfy as can be. Probably the most comfortable way to, uh, to shelter. And all you need to uh, back it up is a good tarp that will cover the length of it. Probably the most uh, recommended piece of gear I will ever recommend, ever, is the USGI Poncho. These things you can get, and I've got a couple videos on it if you look through my uh, channel. A couple videos on these. They're about $20 to $30. They're a uh, nylon poncho, and it has grommets in the corner. You can use, and it's got snaps as well. You can use this thing as a poncho. You can use it as a ground cloth. You can use it as a tarp. I use it over this hammock. You can use it as an improvised sleeping bag because you can actually uh, snap it together and it makes a rectangle shape. And I've used this along with a wool blanket or the uh, poncho liner, the USGI poncho liner, to make a sleeping bag. Very effective sleep system, very versatile. This is a great piece of bug out gear because you have 18 different uses for it. They weigh about a pound and right now you see it's wadded up into a ball. If you uh, roll this down, you can get this to about the same size as uh, 
you can get them about this size right here if you really work at it. But it does take, you know, a little time to, to roll it properly and do it right. Very durable. I've been using this one for a couple of years now, probably about three years. It pretty much goes on every trip I go on. So, great piece of gear. I've got some rope attached to it, as you can see, that I leave on there permanently. So, when I do have to set it up as a shelter, I've already got rope attached to all four grommets. Can't ask for a better piece of gear. If you're bugging out, I'd say aside from having a good small tent, having this poncho is the next best thing because you have, you know, a waterproof poncho, sleeping bag, and tarp. Best of all worlds, you know. And you can take this thing, if you're in a real wilderness situation, you can fill this thing with dead leaves, dead grass, or whatever, and make a very good improvised sleeping bag out of that thing, so... For the 25 30 bucks, amazing piece of bug-out gear. In the back, we have a standard run-of-the-mill um, waterproof sleeping bag cover. Very good piece of gear. Not as good, in my opinion, as the poncho because it's not as versatile. The only thing you can use it for is a sleeping bag cover. But nonetheless, if you're in a wet, damp, cold environment and your sleeping bag is your only source of heat to stay alive at night, you need to keep that dry. So getting a sleeping bag cover... Probably a pretty good idea. That one there was like 25 bucks from Camp Moore. It's uh, polyester. And I bring it out and I uh, paint it with a Thompson's water seal about once a year to uh, to help it out. Because it is getting a little on the old side. Of course you can buy these uh, Adventure Medical Kit uh, bivy bags. They're basically like a space blanket but shaped into a bivy sack. Same idea. Not as versatile as the poncho. But... Still a really cool piece of gear. I think they're around twenty dollars, and it's a um, you know, if you were to be sleeping out in the woods and you had just that, you could make that into an improvised sleeping bag. Fill it with grass, plants, dead leaves, whatever, and make yourself a good pile of insulation to sleep in and to keep in and to help keep and uh, put that body heat back in there. And the last piece of gear, just to show you, you can get really small backpacking tarps. This one here. Um, I could actually get this smaller if I repacked it. I did a crummy job repacking it. You could probably get this down to about... You could probably make it about a third smaller. This is one of those Walmart ones. It's a 5 by 7 They're like 6 8 bucks. It weighs a couple of ounces. And that's it. There's lots of good backpacking tarps out there you can buy that are, you know, under $100. Or you could buy the, like that cheapo Walmart uh, outdoor products one. You know, it's 7 8 bucks. A tarp is a big thing. You can use it as a ground cloth to get you off the wet, cold ground over your head to keep bad weather off you. You can wrap your sleeping bag up in it. You can, you know, put it on top of your tent. You can make like a vestibule or to keep the rain off you. A lot of different uses. This right here, all combined, you're looking at about two, three, four, maybe five pounds of shelter. And this will cover every bit of shelter need that you would ever have in the wilderness. This is overkill at five pounds. So if you do have a big enough bag and plenty of room, you could bring all of this. But really, in reality, you could do, you know, if I had to pick, I would go with the uh, tent, hammock, and the poncho. And that would cover everything you would need. And as far as I'm concerned, that would be hurricane-proof. And in fact, it is because I've done these two in Hurricane Irene. So when you're picking your shelter, pick easy, small, portable, easy to set up. And like I said, if you've got something with grommets or needs rope, leave rope attached to it. So you have it in a bug out situation and you're not using the rest of your rope to set up your shelter. Um, but like I said, I always think small, lightweight, portable, easy to pack, easy to care for. You don't have to use what I'm showing here, but these are just really good ideas of how to shelter even in the worst environments. And guys, we all live in different climates. Some people in America live in the desert. Some people live in, you know, Alaska, up in, you know, pretty much the Arctic. We all have different needs, and you have to fit these needs for your environment or your planned bug out environment. So that's why I'm not doing a, just a plain old bug out bag, but rather to show the different options we all have when it comes to bugging out. So I hope you guys enjoyed. This is the shelter portion. Um, up next, I think we're going to cover uh, probably security next, but that won't be till probably uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. So, hope you guys enjoyed.